Hi, I'm Melanie Conklin. I'm the author of Counting Time and Every Missing Piece. And I am here to wish you happy summer reading and to read the first chapter of Every Missing Piece to you. This book, which just came out uh, in May, is about an 11 year old girl named Maddie and she is the kind of kid who worries about things going wrong. Um, I was a lot like that as a kid too. Uh, Maddie has uh, developed a little bit of a reputation for overreacting and uh, her mom and other people in her life kind of question her judgment but um, she has a new boy move into her neighborhood and she um, believes, comes to believe that this boy is really a child that went missing six months earlier. So this is the story of what's going on there, uh, whether or not Maddie is right, um, and whether the grown-ups will listen to her or not. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to read you the first chapter, which will take me about five minutes. And uh, I encourage you to check out every missing piece at any of your local independent bookstores. Chapter one is called everything goes somewhere the day billy holcomb went missing tornadoes made me miss the bus technically they were just potential tornadoes and i was hiding in the culvert when the bus blew past me but life can go from good to bad in a heartbeat and i'd rather be safe than sorry how did he miss you mom asked maybe he was in a hurry i said which was sort of true the middle school bus driver has a reputation He'll skip your stop if you aren't waiting exactly where you're supposed to be. We were three weeks into the school year, so I already knew that, but the sky had looked way too angry to risk standing out in the open that morning. Tornadoes can come from anywhere at any time. It doesn't even have to be raining out. North Carolina may not be a tornado magnet, but there are more of them here than you might think. I should say something to the principal, Mom said. Stan looked up from the little red notebook he keeps in his pocket, where he was busy writing about who knows what. Stan basically ceases to exist when he's writing in his notebook. It's like his whole brain disappears inside the pages. Where were you standing exactly, he asked. By the bus stop. This wasn't a lie, but it wasn't the whole truth. I was standing, but sort of crouched over, and not right next to the bus stop, but in the culvert next to it. The culvert is a ditch made of thick concrete, so it isn't going anywhere, even if a tornado does drop out of the sky and try to suck me up. If mom knew the truth, she wouldn't have been mad, but she would have been concerned. Those days, everyone was concerned about me. Like they all expected me to freak out because mom and Stan got married, when really I just wished everyone would leave me alone about it. Stan tipped his head, thinking, I swear you could see actual gears turning behind his eyes. If I didn't get moving, he would put the pieces together and blow my cover. Can you give me a ride? I asked mom, who sighed. She works nice as a labor and delivery nurse, and she really should have been asleep by then. I can, Stan offered. I need to get to the office early anyway. Mom smiled. That would be great, honey. Thanks. But mom, Maddie, I'm sure you appreciate Stan's offer. Mom's eyes said I did, with daggers. Mom is always trying to get me to be cool with Stan. I don't have to pretend he's my real dad or anything, but it's still annoying how she says stuff in this pointed way like we don't all know what's going on here. But I also know that getting along really matters to mom, and that more than anything, she wants me and Stan to be friends. Thanks, Stan, I said. He beamed like he'd won stepfather of the year. It's not that I don't appreciate Stan, but he drives slower than the church ladies on Sundays. Sure, there aren't any posted speed minimums, but there are limits to what is reasonable. Stan is from New York City, where people don't even have cars. He doesn't know how to mow the lawn or rake leaves either. He just got his driver's license over the summer, and that was only because Mom made it a requirement for getting married, which they did in August, right before I started sixth grade. Now Mom is Sarah Wachowski instead of Sarah Gaines, but I'm still Madison, Maddie, Gaines. It's not like Stan adopted me or anything. I don't expect him to either. When a person is right, there's a click. You fit together like two halves of a plastic Easter egg. Stan is a good guy, but I'm pretty sure we'll never click like that. Mom opened her arms and gave me a squeeze. I'll miss you today, she said. I closed my eyes and breathed in her warm vanilla smell. Mom is taller than me, but not by much. Her side is soft and steady, and when she presses her cheek against the top of my head, I can feel her smile. She was smiling all the time those days, which I knew had a lot to do with Stan being around. Stan is tall and skinny, and he looks even taller next to Mom. She says I look like Dad, with my stick-straight hair and pointy chin, 
and that I'll probably grow up to be bigger than her too, because Dad was a tall guy also. Stan gathered his work computer and I followed him out to the garage, where my dog Frankie was asleep on her bed. Frankie shot up the second she saw me, but I told her to sit and she plopped right back down, her long black tail wagging. The people who say labs are the best dogs are right. In the car, Stan checked his mirrors and tested his brakes. He set the radio to the local station and beeped before he backed out. At the end of our court, he rolled his window down and signaled with his arm as well as his turn signal, like the dork that he is. As we drove to school, I rested my forehead against the window and watched the familiar pattern of houses and fields roll by. Summerfield is just a stretch of highway to people passing through, but it's a nice place to live, even if we have more cows than human beings. The grocery store is a social visit and pig pickings are regular occasions. If you need a hospital or a dry cleaner, you make the 20 minute trip to Greensboro. The local churches hold Sunday suppers and everyone's welcome even if you don't belong to a church, like us. The downside is that everyone knows everybody else's business and rumors spread like wildfire. Halfway to school, a new voice came on the radio. The boy was last seen crossing the street opposite his Fayetteville Middle School at approximately 7.45 yesterday morning. Foul play has not been ruled out at this time. Goosebumps prickled along my arms. Stan moved to switch the radio off, then hesitated. Authorities have issued an amber alert for the boy, Billy Holcomb, age 11. He's described as a white male, approximately four and a half feet tall and 85 pounds, with brown hair, blue eyes, and a round birthmark on his upper chest. He was last seen wearing a white t-shirt and blue jeans. Anyone with information pertaining to his whereabouts should contact their local authorities. Police say the boy may have been abducted. This time, Stan did switch the radio off, plunging us into awkward silence. For some reason, the missing boy made me think of Dad. Only my father didn't disappear. He died. A heavy feeling clouded my chest. This happens sometimes when I think about Dad. It's like my body doesn't know how to live with the idea of not him not being here anymore, even though he's been gone a long time. Dad died when I was eight. Now I'm 11 but some losses keep coming back the way a shout echoes long after it's gone. I still text him sometimes. The messages don't go through, but writing them helps. I tell him about my day or when I'm stuck on a math problem or when Stan really drives me bonkers. Sometimes I just say, I love you. He never answers back. I could feel Stan glancing at me, waiting for me to say something about the missing boy, but I kept my eyes on the road and tried my best to look like I wasn't freaking out, even though my mind was racing. What kind of kid got himself abducted right outside his own school? Everyone knew about strangers. Don't talk to them, don't take candy from them, and never ever go anywhere with them. That way you don't end up plastered all over the news, or worse. I swallowed hard, trying to get some moisture moving in my throat. Are you okay, Stan asked. There it was again, the concern. I nodded, my face going hot. I'm sure they'll find him, Stan said. A large percentage of abductions turn out to be misunderstandings rather than actual kidnappings. Not that it's bad to care about things like this, he said quickly. Your mom and I just want you to be happy. He stopped speaking then, his pale cheeks pinking up the way they always did when he tried to talk to me. It's not that I don't want to click with Stan. We're just different. Mom and I eat oatmeal. Stan likes hard-boiled eggs. We take our shoes off at the door, but Stan always forgets. We use whole milk. He drinks skim. It feels like Stan is the wrong piece for our puzzle. No matter which way I turn him, he just doesn't fit. Stan was still watching me, so I gave him a tiny smile to show him I was okay. He was right. The kid had to be somewhere. Things can't just disappear. They can move. They can hide. They can get stuff down inside you. But they have to go somewhere. Five minutes later, we pulled up into the drop-off lane at school. But when I turned to shut the car door behind me, Stan didn't give me his usual chipper wave goodbye. After a few seconds, he saw me waiting and smiled, but his smile didn't reach his eyes. He was worried again about whether we would ever click, about whether this new family of ours would work, about whether he'd made a terrible mistake by signing up to be my stepfather. Stan liked to pretend his worries disappeared the day he married mom, but they were right there in his eyes. Like I said, everything goes somewhere. And that is the end of chapter one. So you will have to check out the book to find out what happens next in Maddie's story. 
and what's going on with this missing boy. Um, when I was a kid, I, I had a lot of what ifs that would run through my mind, and one of those was, what if I found a missing kid? Um, that was something that I felt like I needed to be prepared for, needed to be vigilant about. Um, Maddie is a vigilant character also. Um, I would like to end this welcome to Every Missing Piece by encouraging you as readers to please look at the books that you are reading and consider if you are reading a wide range of voices. Um, as a book lover, it's easy to just read whatever's right in front of me, but it is very important that we as readers read voices, we white readers read voices from other cultures. We need to read black authors. We need to read stories about black protagonists. We need to read from authors of color. We need to read from authors of different orientations. So I would encourage you to take a minute and look at your reading collection and make sure you are reading diversely and inclusively. Thanks so much for checking out the first chapter, and I'll see you later. Happy summer.